a little insight on the, the construction project. How'd it go? Well, uh, I guess it would be better than what I had thought it might be. Uh, I uh, thought that uh, we'd almost have to be cranking the generator to, to get things done, which we almost had to do with, with our breaker. <laughs> we kept having trouble problems with it, but uh, we couldn't have had a better uh, work crew. Uh, everyone just uh, pitched in and, and uh, worked great, and uh, things seemed to just uh, flow. Hit the road running with there uh, with uh, for the Keith and, and uh, getting stuff stuff loaded up and everything, and, and uh, he was a great help. And, as as you were and and getting the roof up and all of that, but, uh, it was it was a great experience and uh, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Anyway, what struck you about the project and why? Uh, it was really a, a life changing experience for me to see how the uh, third world countries live and to for their excitement and seeing us arrive there and on the job site. Uh, I made a little friend there right off the bat uh, when we were lifting the trusses. I, I was just standing up there and I turned around and uh, this little Mayan boy, well I say little, he, he was small but he was like 20 years old, standing right there beside me. I, I looked around and see a ladder. I didn't see a ladder anywhere. <laughs> I don't know how he got there but anyway he was helping me set the truss at, at, on the top of the wall. But uh, his name was Prudencio, and uh, I think I'll have a friend for life, long distance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Paul, you and Greg kind of headed up the, the furniture construction. Uh, give us kind of a rundown, Paul. Talk, talk to us about it a little bit. Well, um, I did have a couple of frustrations with uh, the old tools we were using. They really could use some updated tools and uh, some of the lumber. but. Um, but the one thing that impressed me was how everybody worked together. There were no drama queens or kings in, in this group, and uh, everyone was more than willing to do whatever they could or to stay out of the way if they needed to do that. They found other things to do uh, when we didn't need but just a couple of people. And the way everyone worked together was fantastic. I didn't get to go out. Uh, to the work sites uh, except for Mobile Ha on that Sunday. But uh, all the time I was thinking that I was doing the Lord's work, carpentry, and also uh, making these uh, pews and uh, all these things to give people uh, a comfortable environment in which to hear the Word of God. And I knew that what I was doing was going to be uh, a blessing to the people. Greg, what? Uh... What, uh, what impacted you the most about uh, the project of Truth? It was just the people. They're so loving, so caring. Um, they just appreciate everything you do for them, uh, no matter how small it is. As Paul said, you know, we all work so well together. And there was one young man who came there the first day that I'm hoping that we brought him to Jesus. We don't know yet, but we put the seed there. Yes. His name is Dario. He is uh, Sebastian's brother-in-law. Mm. So he helped us a lot, and I hope we planted the right seed. That's powerful. Lynn, best memory. Best memory. We were around putting up the uh, putting the shutters in the windows, and uh, this old guy, he like anyway, and he. Uh, this guy just come around and kind of took hold of things and, and uh, helped us. And he was a son son of the uh, the pastor there, and uh, Leonardo was his was his name. And uh, he was just uh, bubbly and just wanted to uh, help us in any way he could, and almost took our tools away from us to to get it done. And uh, yeah. If it's just he and, and several other guys, I mean, it's just uh, they were waiting around to just jump on something to do do for us, yeah. and uh, their their attitudes were, were great. Anyway, if, can you think of a time which uh, God showed up? Oh, I can I can think of many times. Uh, things just would not have happened 
the way they did, unless he did, didn't show up. You know, I mean, the thing was orchestrated tremendously. It was evident the guy was in it. It was, at, yes. That, you know, you look up and say, how did that get done? And the only way it could have gotten done was through, through uh, Christ, you know, Jesus intervening in, in the situation. Paul, best memory? The worship service at Noble High. Yeah. Walking in there, seeing the, the finished product, uh, seeing the, the roof on, the pews in place, and the Spirit of God moving. I couldn't understand 90% of what they were saying, but uh, the Spirit of God was moving in power there, and it just joined us all together as one. It was, it, it was tremendous. Becky, tell us, tell us about uh, the VBS and what happened, how to go. Um, we started off the first night in San Felipe, and um, it was very interesting. Um, the, as the kids came in, it was pouring down rain, and they came anyway. And people just continued to, to come in the door and, and regardless of, of the rain. And I, I was very impressed with their dedication to just be there late at night, dark outside, no, um, no really way to see to get there. And it, that was exciting. Creaky Sarko, I fell in love with. I tell you, I could move there tomorrow. Um, the people are the most giving, the most genuine, the most just, they don't, you know, here we think we lack stuff. And we look at them and go, they're lacking things and they're lacking nothing. They just love one another, take care of one another, all work together as a group. And to see them all flood in and be a part of the, the services and just join in. And um, the pastor came up to us after one of our services and said, I think you spoke more to the teenagers than you did to the kids today. And that was even exciting that it, it went through all ages. It didn't just um, for the kids. It was, I tell you, it was an experience that I would go back tomorrow and do again. Cheryl, talk to us about uh, your sites. What impressed you? We had, we had one site that Wednesday night the pastor didn't, he wanted to preach, and so we did it that afternoon. But the next site that we went to, when you drive down the street and you're just coming in the community and you all you see is kids running toward the van, and all they want is just to go there and come. And you know we're thinking, oh, we have to go out and we have to make calls and all this, but these kids are running to get to church and they tromp through the water and through the mud and everything just to get to church and we were noticing one night that we had our crew behind us painting while we were doing VBS and we had their total total thought and everything they weren't worried about what was going on back there they glued to what we were telling them and and when, what really hurts is when one of them looks up at you and he has these wild eyes he goes are you coming back tomorrow and your heart breaks because you have to look at him and tell him no or not it was heartbreaking Jerome, what, uh, what impacted you the most on, on the trip? Um, the dashboard of our van, <laughs> when I, I put it into the river. Um, that was quite an impact. Um, no, but all, all joking aside, it, that um, one, uh, one event, there was so much that, that God was showing me in that mm -hmm. accident. Um, it, I was thinking about it, it was just amazing that all the events that had to occur to, um, I really shouldn't be amazed about it, but it is amazing. The timing, we, we were running a little late, and um, the the fact that the, the that little punk teenager was on the road um, walking exactly <laughs> at that exact moment when we drove up to it, um, it you know, and and then, you know, this very scary, you know, dump of the van into the, into the uh, ravine. And then, uh, you know, 30 minutes later, um, we're sort of frazzled and I've contacted Darren and, and um, I just got this sort of realization that um, things, God was showing me something, it, it, just a glimmer, you know, you get that glimmer like, this might be a moment that I need to pay attention to. And um, not long after I got off the phone with Darren, um, the, the perfect 
crew of loggers with the exact <laughs> equipment. We're talking a very large tractor, a uh, PTO lifter, uh, with a forklift and the chain and everything needed to lift the van out of that ravine. And then the pastor, um, Pastor Peter, brought four or five planks of wood to build a temporary bridge and, and guide us out of that. Uh, out of that. Um, right before that occurred, um, the, the most interesting thing is I, I just felt in, uh, impelled to, to call Becky and tell her to go into the church and get everybody to start praying for this event. It was, it, I was at my wit's end for sure. Yes. And um, I just knew that without God, you know, Darren is out in a different area. And I mean, Darren is a great leader, but he was not going to lift that van out on his own. <laughs> and it, it, he would have done everything he could, but without God's power, it, it was just a perfect opportunity for God to show who he really is and that he really cares for us. And without hitch, well, they hitched up the van, but <laughs> without a hitch, it just kind of came out of the, the ravine and um, amazingly, no real damage to that mm -hmm. van. And we just drove home safely and just thankful to God that he was there. Um, so many illustrations and sermons and, and things that I can share from this just came to mind, just flooded to my mind while while he was working throughout this this event. It was just great. Tammy, best best memory? The children. I mean, they spoke to us more than we spoke to them. We I felt like we went and they mission they were our mission trip. You know? We um, like Becky said, it rained every day multiple times a day, rain, you know, during the night. We're sitting there hiking into the church trying to miss the puddles and not get our feet wet. And they just come traipsing through up to their ankles. No big deal. Coming to the church, nothing stops them. The adults, the kids, the babies, mm -hmm. ride their bicycles if they have one, a few of them did. Um, when we're painting, um, the one church, pregnant lady and her little, probably five-year-old came up and said, can we have a brush? And I mean, it is stinking hot. And they just start painting, and then a few more show up, and then a couple of men show up. And I mean, before you know it, we just had workers everywhere. And for them not to have anything, I mean, the parsonage was just a floor with walls and a few shelves for clothes. And at night, they pull the hammocks out. And that's how they sleep. You know, it's just, they were so thankful to us for everything we did for them. They were so attentive. The kids were so loving. It was, and the adults too, the adults stayed. They didn't come dump their kids off. They came just like the kids, just in droves. And when we had to do the Bible school early, I asked the pastor's wife if she could get the word out. And she told her little girl and pointed to go on the back street and before you know it, the kids just start coming and we still had 47 out of the 57 we had the night before. I mean, it was just amazing. Becky, Cheryl, talk to us about the, the Vacation Bible School. I mean, we did a difficult thing where we gave you a different team every day and, and it had its challenges. Uh, talk to us about how that worked. Well, I felt it was, um, I wouldn't have had it any other way of not knowing who and not, you know, as we were preparing for this, I, of course, I'm the one that wanted all my ducks in the row. And um, I remember coming to you and saying, hey, can I meet with the team a month ahead of time? Can we start actually, you know, going through these programs with them? And can we practice? And you're like, no, 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 just when we get there, you know, because things are going to be different. And I, I struggled with that. I struggled with, because that's a little bit of my OCD. I wanted it all planned out. And I found by not planning it out and by actually handing them the scripts as we're traveling in the car and we're um, saying, okay, who's going to be the clowns? Who's going to be the ringmaster? Who's going to do these pieces? That the Lord just pulled it together. I mean, and people blossomed just like you told me they would. People blossomed into roles. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I heard things come out of my son Christopher's mouth that I would have never 
dream that he has he has the ability to speak to people and I just listening to him stand up there and give a message to the kids mm -hmm. just blessed my heart knowing that this this kid's gonna be called for something he doesn't know what yet and I don't know but I felt it I felt that God has something for him and just to just to see the different ones just explode of uh, the enthusiasm of being a part just bless my soul and then just to sit and watch on our second day at Creaky Sarco um, I called an altar call both both times on you know at San Felipe and then Creaky Sarco and Jerome went up to lead the prayer and um, I had told the pastor to talk to the kids about salvation we had already done the salvation booklet with them and gone through the colors and what they meant and I just asked the pastor to get up and you know offered anybody that wanted to come forward and pray and literally the whole front of the stage kids just flooded it and then I told Jerome and Jerome started praying a prayer of salvation just a simple prayer and in the back the pastor right behind him was in their native tongue was saying the same thing and it was just you could just feel God's presence so real in that sanctuary and just I tell you it, it, it changed me it's just uh, been exciting to see what God what God can do when you just let go stop playing and stop trying to get it perfect Becky and just let go and let God. So. I was like Becky, I'm OCD, and I was thinking, we're not gonna pull this off. I mean, I'd already tossed my hands up and just, we're gonna wing this because I gotta have it like this. But when you get there that night and you watch those kids grasp onto every word that you had to say, and when you had a simple little puzzle cut out of a poster board, and you tossed it in the floor and told them to put it together, and then they just swarmed it. And I'm thinking, you know, would our kids be that content with a piece of poster board? And it just, you know, you just, like Tammy said, they taught me more than I, than what I intended to, to, I didn't, I wanted to be the teacher. I didn't want them to be teaching me, but they taught me how to sit back and relax and enjoy the things that I have versus what they have.